And Lori, where are we with the mystery as to um, uh, Beckett's uh, the murder of her mother? What's the latest with that? What's going to find out about that? Um, I'm not sure. I think I have to uh, toss that to Andrew Marlowe. Okay. We're all on a need-to-know basis from Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, I feel like uh, I'm an oil executive. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will be uh, uh, this season dealing with uh, Beckett's mother's murder, and we will uh, be pushing that investigation downfield a, a little bit. It's uh, you know, it's such an issue of identity for the character that it's something that we don't feel we want to wrap up too quickly. But we will be delving deeper into it and the conspiracy behind it. Cool. Uh, John is... I feel like I'm giving all the straight answers. Nathan says something, everybody laughs. I say something, everybody's like, hmm. <laughs> Andrew, please do your Christopher Walken imitation for us. <laughs> uh, for that, I'll defer to Nathan. <laughs> um, John and Seamus, it seems like there's something with your character's relationship that we don't know. There's more going on. <laughs> What would you say to that? What's, what's going on? What don't we see? What don't we see? I'm gonna have to divert that to Andrew. I'm kidding. <laughs> and I'll refer that to speak. slash fiction pages. Exactly. Uh, whatever you read on fan fiction, it's not that. Uh, I think that, uh, that... <laughs> that Detective Ryan and Detective Esposito have, uh, more of a, um, They are, they are brothers, okay? They are brothers. They're like, they're like, uh... There's nothing wrong with men being friends. <laughs> There's nothing wrong in the world about it. Sometimes people are close, they share things. Otherwise, share is closest to a marriage that some cops have. You are digging such a deep hole, bro. <laughs> I think Esposito needs a girlfriend, I think Ryan needs to get married to Jenny, and I think that needs to happen very soon. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's true. Well, one of the great things for us uh, when we're making the show is that uh, John and Seamus are really good friends as well off screen, and so, you know, the, the two of them will engage in Esposito-Ryan-like banter up to the moment that action's called, and then they'll go into the you know, the Ryan Esposito banter right there. It's just really fun to watch them. And we actually just basically just talk the same and then we just start talking about murder. <laughs> exactly. When, when action is, is called. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're like brothers. I think uh, the relationship that you don't see on screen, we're, we're brothers. We, uh, there's, an, there's an evil twin. There's the good twin. He's the one that got good grades. I'm the one that didn't get such good grades. He's the one that... I'm the one who got all the girls, he got one girl. I'm a nerd. Uh, Jenny. If, if we would have met in high school, John probably would have kicked my butt. <laughs> well, I think actually we have some video footage of these two characters that you haven't seen yet. Something behind the scenes. Fun. Uh, we're going to go to your questions now, but first, um, uh, Maribel Galarpe in the audience. Uh, we want to thank you for Facebooking about the water bottle campaign, and we have an uh, armband for you. So if you want to go to the uh, tech booth, We'll give you one of those armbands to get you into the autograph session. Woo! So let's. Wow. There's a lot of people. Out there. Let's start with the first question. This room is double the size. Yeah, we didn't know that. Wow. This room is double rainbow. <laughs> Hang on, I didn't hear you. Double rainbow. <laughs> so intense. What does it mean? Well, I'm ready when you yeah, guys let's, are. Yeah, let's take the first question, whatever. All right, well, I had plenty of other questions, but just watching guys on the panel there, I thought that maybe I should ask, how do you guys get anything done? <laughs> it's hard being the only adult on the show. Nathan? That's me. Uh, you really are ruggedly handsome. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering if we were, were going to find out more about either Kate or Rick's childhood. Are we going to see them as kids or teenagers? or? 
Ooh, that'd be cool, like having a... Ooh, what if we had an episode where we kind of go to a flashback and like they met once as kids but don't remember? <laughs> that'd be fun, right? Pulling some pigtails on a, on, a, on, a, on a playground. Kate, stop pulling my pigtails. <laughs> So, you guys, you see all these bodies and this blood and all this stuff. Do you guys ever get squeamish at looking at some of the stuff that the prop people have made up? No, I actually flirt with the guys that are laying on the slab. In between takes, I'm like, hey, how you doing? No, it's just syrup, so it's good. <laughs> we, we have so many people come up to us and say that they want to be uh, dead bodies on the show, but it's, it's actually a hard gig. You gotta lie on the, the cold yep. table, you gotta have that thing under your neck, and you gotta lie still. Yep. And then when it's time for uh, a take, it's like, okay, and I'll hold your breath. And then we go through the take, and you know, inevitably somebody forgets to tell them to breathe, and they actually yeah. turn blue. The majority, it's, it's, it's the majority of our, um, our, our dead people are stunt people. We actually hire a stunt person to play because some of the, the way that they were they're found, they're, it's compromised situations. They're hanging from fire escapes. They're so, oh, so they're in manholes in, in manholes. cities oh. with cockroaches crawling over them and dribbling onto their heads. That was screaming. <laughs> or or the the one where the the woman was hanging in the girders and it was December. And uh, we uh, we were watering her down in between takes because she was supposed to be melting. Yeah. She was freezing. Yeah. That's a lot of fun in December. Well, it's December it's in L.A. Here. It's not like... <laughs> 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 but you know had a good time? Tom Bergeron had a really good time yes. being the body. He really, he really dug it. He had fun. My question is, when you are writing the show for specific episodes, do you plan on filming more than one or two days because of all the antics and shenanigans that go on with the cast and crew? No, we actually have a pretty rigorous schedule. It's, uh, it's eight days for every episode, and uh, there's a point in the season where we have a, a story being broken, one on the board, one being written, one in pre-production, one in production, and one in post-production. And the trains just have to keep running. So, uh, you know, these guys are, are really great. They have a lot of fun. But when it's time for action, they're, they're always there. They're always ready. It's, it's one of the best casts I've worked with. Why do you think it's important to have a character like Beckett on television? Because I think she's truly unique and you don't see a lot of people like her all the time. Well, how do you feel she's unique? Well, she's, I mean, she's flawed, but she, she, you know, she loves her job. And it's just, I think it has to do with all the character development that Andrew put in and, and what you bring to it. And I'm just wondering why, she, why you think someone like her needs to be on television. Because you don't see the flawed girl who grew up rough and you know she just she's doing something and maybe not living up to what she could have been had her mom not died uh, things like that yeah I think she's kind of got um, a little bit of a female superhero quality which is really neat you know to have on television so definitely there's realism she's not just your standard kind of detective she's got um, a wild side that we keep exploring. She's got a real sensitive kind of naive side as well, which is beautiful. So there's more complexity, I think, to her than your average um, female detective person. Well, one of the things that uh, Stana and I talked about uh, with the character is that we wanted to create a female character that was a little bit post-feminist, so the issue wasn't proving herself in a man's world inside the station. She just is, and it's about her doing the best possible job that she can do. And I think Stana has played that really beautifully. 